Hello. Do you feel fatigue, muscle and joint pain? A sense of muscle weakness, sleep problems, high blood pressure, frequent infections? Could there be something wrong with your body? Or does it have to do with a lack of vitamins? What is happening? Today I will talk about the 10 main symptoms of vitamin D deficiency and also explain why vitamin D is important and the 10 benefits it can bring to your body. So pay attention. If you are suffering from these symptoms, there is a high chance you have low vitamin D levels in your body, given that more than 1 billion people suffer from vitamin D deficiency worldwide. You heard it right, more than 1 billion. And in Brazil, even with a tropical climate, a recent study showed that more than half of Brazilians between 18 and 45 years old have their vitamin D levels below the desirable and 15% have a significant deficiency that can harm their health. Imagine the elderly. Therefore, it is very important to know the symptoms. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our health tips and activate the notification bell. Also, share this knowledge with your friends and family. As I said, many people suffer from vitamin D deficiency. By sharing, you will be helping these people. So share it and tell me, do you have a vitamin D deficiency? Do you supplement or have you supplemented? Where in the world are you from? Write it down below. Let's get to the point. What does vitamin D do for our body? By learning the 10 functions of vitamin D, we can better understand the symptoms of vitamin D deficiency. 10th benefit. It has an anti-cancer action. Vitamin D is a hormone discovered just over a hundred years ago in 1920 that affects our entire body, binding to the genetic material inside our cells and regulating hundreds of genes in various tissues. But does it have an anti-cancer action? It seems so. It can influence the cell cycle and cell differentiation, processes related to cancer formation. Additionally, vitamin D modulates our immunity especially regulating T cells and Th2 cells, which serve as anti-cancer guards and can also reduce angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels that feed the tumor and protect against oxidative stress on DNA. The largest study of its kind ever conducted was the VITAL study. Between the placebo group and people who took 2,000 units of vitamin D per day, there was a reduction in metastases and cancer deaths in the group that took vitamin D, see the chart here, and a study was just released in December 2022 from Finland on people at high risk for melanoma. Those who consistently took vitamin D had a 55% lower chance of developing melanoma than those who did not take it. So it is important to check if your vitamin D levels are good, and if they are not, it is worth supplementing. Ninth benefit, vitamin D can improve your mood. Vitamin D is involved in the production of neurotransmitters, which are chemical substances that transmit messages between neurons. Vitamin D can affect the production of serotonin, which regulates mood, sleep and appetite, dopamine, which is related to motivation and pleasure, and noradrenaline, which is related to attention and stress. In Nordic countries, where it gets dark very early in winter, an experiment was conducted comparing phototherapy to a single dose of vitamin D, and vitamin D performed better. Countries with little sunlight have a higher chance of depression and worse mental health. Eighth benefit, it can improve your immunity. Vitamin D modulates the harmful inflammatory response of some white blood cells and increases the production of microbe-fighting proteins by immune cells. So much so that at the beginning of COVID, there was a frenzy to supplement vitamin D for everyone, and to this day it cannot be said whether it improves or does not improve. But children with rickets, who have very low vitamin D levels, have more respiratory infections, and adults with low vitamin D levels have more colds and coughs than those with adequate levels. There was also a study with Japanese children where vitamin D was supplemented and it was found that those who received vitamin D had 40% less influenza A than those who received a placebo. Here I should also mention that there was no difference in influenza B infection rates. Seventh benefit, it can help your bone and dental health. Vitamin D is your ally in the absorption of calcium and phosphorus, which are essential for the health of your bones and teeth. 
Calcium is the key nutrient for bone building and vitamin D allows the intestine to absorb calcium from the foods we eat. Several studies link low blood levels of vitamin D with an increased risk of fractures in older adults. But does supplementing vitamin D help? It seems not. A large study published last year in the New England Journal showed that supplementing 2,000 units of vitamin D per day did not reduce the risk of fractures compared to a placebo. Sixth benefit, it can help your blood pressure. Some studies show an association between low vitamin D levels and hypertension. One theory is that vitamin D may regulate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which, when imbalanced, increases blood pressure. Additionally, vitamin D may help endothelial function, aiding in vasodilation, but this association may also be because people who exercise more outdoors have higher vitamin D levels, take better care of themselves, have a lower weight and lower blood pressure. Fifth benefit, it can improve your circulation. Besides being linked to higher blood pressure, a vitamin D deficiency also increases the risk of heart disease, heart attack, angina, heart failure, a weak or dilated heart, stroke and peripheral artery disease. Why does this happen? Low vitamin D can increase inflammation in the body, lead to atherosclerosis, which is the accumulation of fat in the arteries, and worsen endothelial dysfunction. Fourth benefit, it can improve your memory. Vitamin D receptors are located throughout the brain and spinal cord. As I mentioned, it helps produce more neurotransmitters and in the growth and repair of nerves and the protection of neurons against inflammation. Research has shown that vitamin D can improve overall brain function. One study found that individuals with lower vitamin D levels performed worse on mental tests than those with adequate vitamin D levels. Third benefit, it can help with diabetes. Recent studies confirm the connection between vitamin D deficiency, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Reducing insulin resistance can prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. Fat cells contain vitamin D receptors. Vitamin D deficiency can lead to increased production of fat cells, which secrete inflammatory substances that affect insulin function and increase insulin resistance. Additionally, the pancreatic cells responsible for insulin secretion contain vitamin D receptors. As a result, vitamin D deficiency can reduce insulin secretion from the pancreas, worsening blood sugar levels. Second benefit, anti-inflammatory effect. Vitamin D has an anti-inflammatory effect. The vital study found that taking vitamin D supplements, 2000 IU day, for five years reduced the incidence of autoimmune diseases by about 22% compared to a placebo. It reduced rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, polymyalgia rheumatica, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and Graves' disease. Another study with young American adults found that people with higher vitamin D levels in their blood had a 62% lower risk of developing multiple sclerosis than those with the lowest levels. I can also mention that children living in Finland, where the sun is rare, have a 400 times greater chance of having type 2 diabetes than children living in Venezuela. First benefit, it can improve your muscles. Vitamin D deficiency increases the risk of muscle weakness by up to 78%. This was demonstrated by a Brazilian study from the Federal University of Sao Carlos and University College London. Your bone health and muscle health are interconnected. Vitamin D helps repair muscles and release calcium for muscle contraction. It can also preserve muscle fibers Therefore, vitamin D is an important hormone for maintaining your bone mass and muscle mass. So, let's go. Now that you know what vitamin D does in our body, what are the 10 symptoms of low vitamin D? 10th symptom, fatigue or tiredness. This symptom can go unnoticed, or we may think it is just stress and lack of sleep. But vitamin D helps mitochondria function better and produce more energy. So it makes sense that if you don't have enough vitamin D, you will feel tired all the time. So if you are always feeling tired, you might need more sun in your life or check your vitamin D levels and supplement. Ninth symptom, muscle pain. Do you know those muscle pains that appear out of nowhere 
and have nothing to do with the workout you did yesterday. Well, it could be that you are deficient in vitamin D. As I mentioned before, vitamin D is important for the functioning of your muscles and the regeneration of muscle fibers. So if you are suffering from chronic muscle pain, it's time to measure your vitamin D levels. Eighth symptom, muscle weakness. It's not just muscle pain. If your vitamin D is low, you may start experiencing muscle weakness. You notice that instead of increasing the weight you lift at the gym, you are reducing it. Seventh symptom, bone pain. When you are an adult, you have usually stopped growing, but your bones are always regenerating. If you don't have enough vitamin D, your bones can become more fragile, causing a problem called osteomalacia in adults or rickets in children. So if you want to keep your bones strong and pain-free, don't forget about vitamin D. Sixth symptom, hair loss. Vitamin D plays an important role in hair health as it helps regulate the hair growth cycle. When a person is deficient in vitamin D, their hair can become thin, weak and brittle and it can also lead to hair loss. Fifth symptom, depression and anxiety. As I mentioned, vitamin D helps in the production of neurotransmitters in our brain. Additionally, vitamin D also has anti-inflammatory properties and can help reduce inflammation in the brain, which may be associated with some mental disorders. Fourth symptom, insomnia. The production of melatonin, an important hormone for our sleep, depends on the body's exposure to sunlight, and vitamin D is necessary for this to happen. When there is a vitamin D deficiency, melatonin production can be affected, leading to sleep problems and insomnia. Additionally, when there is a vitamin D deficiency, serotonin production can be affected, which can also worsen the quality of your sleep. Third symptom, joint pain. When there is a vitamin D deficiency, there can be an increase in inflammation in the joints, leading to pain. As I mentioned, studies show that vitamin D supplementation can help reduce arthritis. Second symptom, low immunity and increased risk of infections. If you are suffering from low immunity and frequent infections, the answer might be there. Check your vitamin D levels. First symptom, memory loss. As I mentioned, the brain needs vitamin D. But a recent study from the University of Calgary with over 12,000 people with an average age of 71 years found that taking vitamin D was associated with a 40% lower diagnosis of dementia than those who did not supplement. So, should everyone supplement vitamin D? No. If you have low vitamin D levels, talk to your doctor and they will probably recommend supplementation. Vitamin D is mainly from our skin, from the sun we get, and very little from our diet. Only a few foods are rich in vitamin D, such as fatty fish like salmon. And if it is farmed salmon from Chile, it has very little vitamin D, so it would have to be wild salmon, which is very expensive. Other sources are egg yolk and fortified foods, so we cannot rely on our diet to keep our vitamin D levels good. Diet, no. Sun, yes. And a question I often hear from my patients, if I take a vitamin D supplement, will it only work if I get sun exposure? No. If you are ingesting the vitamin, you do not need to get sun exposure. You would only need to get sun exposure if, even ingesting the vitamin, your vitamin D levels were low. One option would be to get more sun or increase the dose, and also never overdo it. But if your levels are above 100 NG, you can have complications like nephrocalcinosis, nausea, vomiting, and calcifications in other areas of your body. There is a protocol for multiple sclerosis with high doses of vitamin D, the Coimbra protocol, but there they limit calcium and phosphorus and are closely monitored by a doctor. Do not overdo the dose thinking it will be good for you because it can, on the contrary, be harmful. So vitamin D deficiency harms your body and excess does too. Did, did you like the video? Remember to subscribe. See you in the next video. Thank you very much.